the Wellness Street Planning Board underway. Um, we have a couple of agenda items tonight. Um, first up is, sorry, my screen is blank here. Um, a minor subdivision application from Ronnie Carberry. Um, the applicant or her representative wants to get an update. Kevin McInerney, the plans for Bonnie. I'm going to show you just down the street. It's a, basically a one acre lot on Spruce Street. Um, this is the entire limits of the lot. There's no structures on it at all. Uh, we're proposing to split it in half. This feature one half acre lots. The lots meet all the dimensional requirements for the zoning. Um, uh, the zoning uh, Ordinance and um, should be accessed by municipal sewer and water. The sewer will be down here off of uh, Mechanic Street. The water will be further down on Spruce Street. We provided an easement in the front of the property for access for the utilities, and um, uh, that's pretty much straightforward. The, the, actually, this 20 foot easement coincides with the setback line, so it doesn't interfere with any setback issues with the house. So, uh, I saw John's comments and reviewed the plans. And no issues with those, and we'll make those changes to the plan. Okay. Did uh, anyone, any? <coughs> so, so just as a, a matter of procedure here, I'll take comments from the, the planning board members and then open it up, open the public uh, hearing. Any questions for? We're going to discuss Mr. Krebs' uh, recommendations at the end. Yes. Oh, okay, that's fine by me. Okay, why don't we open the, um, the meeting up for public comment <coughs> at this point. If you could uh, please state your name and um, your address. And yeah. Hi, Steve Scruton, 416 Spruce Street. Can you say your last name again? Yeah, Scruton, S-C-R-U-T-O-N. Okay. Um, basically, I'm just concerned to see... Uh, where, the wa where the water service is coming from, I'm guessing it's not going to have any impact on us, but I would like to be relatively sure of that. Is it coming up Spruce Street? Yes, it is. Okay. The, wa the water service is, is coming, it, lo it looks like right around your house is where the spill got it. Yeah. Yeah. I, don't know, I don't know, I don't know exactly, I know the water runs to this house here right now, so I don't know where it's coming from. Right, the uh, water service, this is uh, where yeah. the property is right here. So yeah. you're, you're here. Yeah, right. So you're right. across the street. So yeah. the water service is up to this point. Yeah. They're going to extend that out yeah. and actually lower it. It's going to be a two inch water line, to my understanding. They've met with the water uh, department, okay. and the sewer department, and they're all on board with that. They've so been, what's coming up to our property will remain the same. Well, it won't change. Basically, to your basically you'll be adding. Extending it for extending there from there. So that's right. The thing is well, no. it already is. It already extends from there. It goes to the, pro to the property line. I think to the one. It yeah, goes to the one across the street yeah. from, from from it, I believe. And All then right. once we get to this property line, it's going to go on the lot yeah. instead of in the road. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm just curious because we already have questionable uh, water pre 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 pressure and, right. you know, and color as well as the uh, <laughs> quality issues. But a little chunky lately. Yeah, so. yeah. Well, the water department has reviewed the plan, so yeah. they're satisfied. Yeah. Well, that's, that's good. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. Can okay, I ask one more question? Of course. These <coughs> both proposed to be single family units? Yes, single yeah. family units. Thank you. What style? Of uh, I'm sorry, can you? Can no, you I'm sorry. No, that's all right. 416 Spruce Street. My name is Laureen Cook, L O R E N E Cook. Thank you. Sorry. I just wondered what style of houses they were going to be. 
please. Yeah, to be honest with you, uh, uh, Bonnie's really selling the lots. She's not oh, she going will. to be building the houses, so we really don't know the styles. So oh. they're, they're um, with Jim oh. God. They're actually going to be like Wendy Welton bungalow styles. I don't know if you've been over at Scout Landing. It's yeah. the same builder as over there. Um, so that would be the style if you want to drive through. It's right around the corner here. So... Nice, oh, Colton nope. oh, Gove with the Gove Group. I'm here representing Eric Chimberg. Oh, okay. Say, say your last, the first name. Colton, C O L T O N. Chris Perot, 421 Spruce Street. Um, and I'm just curious, naturally, you know, I, I could probably keep you all here all night, would pepper you with a million questions, but um, I'm just curious as to, yeah, you know, general nature of things, uh, size, shape, style, number, um, things like that. So it sounds like it's, it's Bonnie and I met and and got to chat briefly so at that time it seemed like more of the plan was to build a single family home and maybe trying to figure out where it should go where it shouldn't go and that type of thing so um my only question is is there any other light you can shed on the plans like would this be just like scout landing like two individual homes for sale exactly single family yep okay same style, looking, everything like so, that. Uh, each on a roughly yeah. half acre lot. Is that the plan? So, so, right. it, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt. This isn't really the purview of the planning board, um, the design of the house or anything. Like yeah. Right. We're really just here to talk about the subdivision. Um, so maybe after the meeting, if you want to take it offline. Yes, sir. Well, to just continue uh, and maybe dial it into more of, of what the planning board's purview is. Um, these two half acre lots are mostly wooded the vast majority yes. of them so yeah. it's almost like it's two quarter acre lots i mean it looks like it's going to be pretty tight to have two houses on there um no tighter than scout landing i mean a, a normal neighborhood um houses are typically pretty close together but um they are vastly majority wooded lots, so the, the building envelopes. On, I mean, if you want to come up here and look at the plan, it might be. It, it might I've seen the scout landing homes. No, no, so no, they yeah. look like your average. I mean, like, these are these are these lots are both 100 feet plus or minus. Them actually plus a little bit. And the size setback is 20 feet. So the building envelope here is you know 60 feet from here to here. So that's that's pretty big. Um, and obviously, so anywhere within this dashed line, they can build. Right. Um, I'm not suggesting that they're going to build the whole thing, but, yep. you know, I mean, a 60-foot wide house by, say, 35 or 36 or 40 feet is, you know, it's a fairly small portion of these these two areas. And, you know, just because it's wooded today doesn't mean it's going to be wooded tomorrow. Well, I mean, yeah, we don't know. Yeah. And but, I, yeah. I mean, this is the first one of these I've ever been in my life, sure. so I don't really know what the heck I'm doing, but... Um, being in a butter, you know, it's it's probably smarter to be here than to skip Absolutely. it. And, yeah. Um, you know, I don't really know what I'm doing. The, so. the planning board, here's what, the planning board regulates, we oversee the, the, the so provide, as long as that, the, you know, that they can come in here and say, you know, we've got enough frontage, the lots are big enough, right. there's, right. there's really little we can do about it. Right. Um, so, you know, if, if you're concerned about, you know, I don't know, a wooden buffer over here, for instance, you know that would be something that you could ask them. You know, can you sure? Um, you can, yeah. can, you do, can you provide us with something? I, and I don't know what you want, but beyond you know, we don't ever ask people for house designs because that's really not our purview. Yeah, yeah. No, and most of I mean, most of my lot is wooded as well, and as you mentioned, may not be tomorrow. So <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> 
it's, uh, you know, work in progress, I guess, right? Mr. Corio? Yes. I don't know if I'm asking you anymore, I apologize. It's John Haney's been on the board. If I have, I have a question for you. I've heard from other people in that area complaints about the water pressure. Do you have any concerns about the um, water it's pressure? It's <coughs> been pretty much orange and brown water for over two months. It's The pressure's been fine, I think. I don't know. Uh, what's your understanding as to why the water is orange and brown? Um, you know, in September, late September, or no, maybe early September, we did get a notice on everyone's door that said we're working on an issue, and it was right as I was coming out the front door with some water to water my plants and some empty two liters that was like orange and brown, and I was like, good thing, you know, I'm glad you're here telling us because I'm looking at this and it is problematic, and seemed, and it was stops that were going in to the lines down the street. Um, not mechanic, but maybe something further down on the street the school frontage is on. Uh, that, and it just seems like ever since those have gone in, there's been issues. Is that your experience? Um, Thank you very much. Sure. And the pressure is terrible. The pressure is terrible. Really? Um, so, Elias, 426 Washington. And this is probably a question more for the board. But if these two lot, if this lot becomes two, they each have their separate driveways and curb cuts and so forth. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anyone else? All right. I'm going to uh, take this opportunity to close off the, the public comment. Um, so, at this point, um, John, you did a write up for us. If you want to um, maybe walk us through what you. I did. The, the first thing that I'd, I'd ask you to do, I mean, you really should do, is, 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 is accept the application as complete. That would be the first motion. You should, someone should make that. Yes, sir. I move that we accept the application as complete. I'll second that. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Hearing none. <clears throat> So the four comments I've made is that um, the recordable plan, Kevin has to sign, if you notice the surveyor stamp, he did stamp it, but he didn't sign the face of the stamp. Uh, my next comment, number two, is that we require granite bounds for frontage, uh, for front corners. He's got an iron pin proposed, <clears throat> so I, I suggested that that be changed to a granite bound. Um, and then third, that, that, that Kevin signed a certificate of monumentation ensuring that he's, uh, or guaranteeing that he placed all the monuments shown in the plan, including that granite bound. And then the fourth one is that we require underground utilities. There is no note on the plan saying that the utilities are going to be underground, so we need to add that to the plan. Um, I will tell you, I talked to Kevin today, and he asked me if, uh, if he could tie the, the bound into uh, the CO. Is, do you think you can dig it or not? Well, I'm just concerned about trying to get a bomb in in this weather, but we'll, we'll get it in. <laughs> I, bet, I, bet like will now. <laughs> I won't be putting it in. It's going to be warm on Thursday. It'll be out. Yeah, <laughs> <I'm sure laughs> <it's a> <laughs> right, good. I'd rather, have it, I'd rather have it done now, just because once once our eyes are off of it, it's right. anyone's guess as to what. Yeah, we have no issue with those comments. All right. Right. That's all I have. So I would just make, I would, I'd recommend approving this with those four conditions. Alrighty. Anyone else from the board have <coughs> um, comments, questions? I should say maybe that I'm a Schindberg employee, so it's not really a Schindberg affair yet. But Do you, you feel like you need to recuse yourself? Or no? We have the numbers. I could just recuse myself now. That sounds fair. Um, all right. So if there is nothing else, then I ask, oh, my question, please. Like, I have heard things about the water up in that area. Can you put your knowledge being on the select board or something? I don't have anything to do with the water. I have to do with the water commissioner. So I don't know. That's so you the first time hearing of it, to be honest with you. But I'm at the bottom of the hill, so if your water is brown and chunky, I can only imagine what mine looks like if I actually drank it. But. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, don't, I don't know. I, I haven't. I, the first I've heard about it. I'm sorry. I'm, oh, if I, if it's the water commissioners that we need to contact. Yeah. They, if you have a, have a second, it was it was just fairly recently, within the last uh, several weeks, that the water commission, the water just just uh, did some work, a, a cleaning of the line, so called. They call it an ice pigging, which I don't know exactly what that 
means, but um, they said it went well. They, I saw them as they were completing, but is your water, uh, water is still is still just is still somewhat discolored. Yes. Mm -hmm. I know we're normally supposed to be talking about this here, I guess, but I would call them to be honest with you and, and double yeah. check with them. I, yeah. I mean, water shouldn't be discolored. I mean, it's treated. I mean. It could be as simple as the, the pipes are corroded, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming, but I don't know. I'm not an engineer, so I don't know. But I would definitely call them. If my water were brown, I'd be calling them every day. But. Um, I did get an email from uh, Angela Matthews, who is in a butter, and she couldn't make it here tonight. Um, so one of them is about the water and the pressure, um, what, what the plan is to service these, these houses. Um, I think we've covered that. The other is um, that uh, the lot she, she feels is primarily ledge, and what the plan would be to to put in a foundation. Um, our, yeah, this isn't purview. this is really the purview of the um, planning board. I'll be the person who buys it. Town Warner and Town Warner. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Really, I think there, I'm pretty sure there is ledge, which is why the water line down the street now is so shallow. It's my understanding that they're going to hammer the ledge out. But you're right; it's not the most important. I think that's right. Yeah, yeah. 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 Do all that work, but I mean, as far as the planning board goes, it meets the, the sure. setbacks and the planning requirements. So, yep. if everyone else is all right with it, I'll move that we accept uh, the application with Mr. Krebs's uh, conditions and move it for a final approval. All right, do we have a second? Oh, no. I need that second. <coughs> uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. I'm actually opposed. I'd like to have something here from the Water Commission. Talk about this. So it's something I've heard from attending planning board meetings for as a member, and during my time, I've heard complaints. And I guess I'm just concerned. You know, we've got, you have someone who's, who's contacted by email. People say they're concerned about it. I'm just wondering if it would be that much of a. I don't think it would be an inconvenience to Mrs. Carberry if we put it off till next time and then brought in someone from the. I think we. Water and sewer to get approval from the water department. They were just, they were uh, contacted and it was discussed where the water would come from okay. as far as the access goes. Well, I mean, at that point, what, what would you be hoping to hear again? From? I guess I'd like to ask them about the pressure in the area and uh, if I'd like to hear from them that they would say this would not further. What's that? Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Well, well no, I mean, I'm, I'm it's a legal subdivision, regardless of whether or not. The water pressure is right or not. I mean, the, the individual can subdivide. That doesn't mean the individual can sell it in the end. I mean, that's not really our. Mm. That's not really our concern. Uh, I, I think, I th yeah, John. I mean, I, I think that you know, we've been down this before with the water and sewer district, and you know, our our requirements say that if if the the lots uh, are are uh, within the sewer and water areas, they shall be served by them. I know there was. I've been dealing with this subdivision for. A couple of months now, and I know there was discussion about not running the water down and putting wells in, and instead they went to the the, the sewer and water district, who said they wanted to service it by water, have have these lots served by water. So, I, you know, if the quality, you know, I don't know what what, what are we going to do about it? Yeah. the quality. I mean, we don't have any authority over the the, the the sewer and water commission, so I don't know what we can do about it. Um, and I and I understand your concern. I just don't know what I, I, I you know. They're providing municipal water and sewer. That everything meets the, the requirements set forth in the zoning ordinance. And I, I just don't know on what basis you'd say either. I, I mean, I'm not suggesting you're, you're you want to deny it, but you don't want to you want to delay. Um, I think that, that that those discussions are for are for the applicant to have with the with the sewer and water commission to make sure that they have good drinkable you know good water with good pressure. And I think the highs have it, regardless. Um, so the motion has passed and approved the subdivision. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, I, I love you have an original set. Yeah.
And uh, so if anybody wanted to research them, you know, they, they could. Um, <clears throat> Okay, a butter mailing addresses, obviously we could get the most recent uh, mailing addresses and update the plan. That's something we could, we could do. Structures on the budding property. Uh, the existing condition plan does show structures, but if, technically if you look at uh, the 200 foot structure requirement, it's not shown, but I do have this, um, which I don't know how I would make that part of the plan, but. This shows all the structures, it's just a Google Map blow up. Um, so that's up to you guys and how, how you want to deal with that. But it, um, you know, we can make that another document attached to the plan. Um, but that information is here. Um, existing utilities, unknown. Uh, basically, we, we talked to the sewer and water department, we're trying to Locate the utilities, but that's something we'll deal with when we do the site work. Um, I will show all my utilities. For instance, electric, electric, they're all shown. Sewer is unknown right now. If there's new sewer lines, then obviously those will be recorded. Um, and then obviously the um, any tanks or anything like that we would show later on. We're just uncertain right now where. You know, things are going to end up exactly, so we've kind of estimated where our underground utilities would be. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, details, uh, well, that's, this, this is a road agent detail, like a uh, curving issue. So we're proposing uh, to move this um, uh, cut a little bit. The cut would stay the same, but we're going to move the curving, so I guess that would be a road agent issue, but that's shown on the plan. Um, let's see what else we got here. We've got uh, so, uh, rear loading dock, as it mentions here, rear, this one's blocked, uh, but these loading docks actually are only for um, one loading dock would serve this one floor, which is the third floor commercial. The other loading dock is actually for residential tenants to move in. So that would be uh, only used sporadically, very actually limited use of that. Uh, and it would be a, like an appointment type thing. So they would be doing it on weekends and stuff when this lot would, would be less full. So um, really we've, we've kind of taken away the loading dock use because the back of the building is not really set up for right. It's not a factory anymore. It really isn't, and and you know to get a tractor trailer in here, and Jay even mentioned that it's virtually impossible. Mm -hmm. So it's really you know if somebody's going to bring a tractor trailer to this building at some point, um, which we we've, we've kind of limited the manufacturing part of the use of the building, they're going to come in here, and they're going to use one of these bay doors. Um, so basically here it would be box truck or like a pickup truck. That's what those doors really are for. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, I guess told me to deal with number four. I don't even know what uh, Jay's talking about on that one. The number four. Yeah, the overflow. Uh, so, regarding the drainage. Sir, can you just state your name? Sure. Tobin Farwell, Farwell Engineering Services. Thank you. Uh, this is the uh, detention pond that we're proposing with an overflow structure. Uh, because of the limited space, we have to put the pipe from the overflow structure that discharges into the, the drainage swale along the emergency overflow, which isn't typical. And that's what he's referring to on that. that we've got the, the pipe will daylight in the middle of the riprap, uh, which, isn't, uh, which isn't great. But because the size of this is so small, I, I don't have a problem with it. Uh, you know, it's, it's not standard engineering practice, but this is not a huge pond that, that I'm, I'm concerned about doing that to. Um, I don't know, do you want to continue on? Or do you want yeah, to yeah, let me just just get through these and then uh, most of this rest of stuff. Um, okay, so right away we talked about that. Those are referenced on the plan. Um, and then we're going to... Um, Actually, this is another item, Tobin. Which one? If you want to take, just, just address that right now, number six. Number six is the proposed 112 condor. 
So yeah. this is the 112 contour right here. And what he's implying is that it goes up to a little bit above 112 and then it has to fall off. So I should have another little 112 contour that ties in on the other side of the pavement. It is a drafting detail okay. that we certainly can add. You can make that change. Okay. Yeah, I didn't understand that. So. Um, and then, um, okay, so uh, number seven, I already addressed that. Number eight. Architectural plan show areas for shipping. Okay, so I addressed that. The shipping and receiving. Uh, I think he's trying to figure out the use of the building. So we've got the two bays, shipping and receiving. I added, uh, I've got a third bay, shipping and receiving, which would be just overflow for storage. So that's why there was some confusion there. There's actually only two bays on the back as the plan show. And the architectural plan show the same thing. So that should be consistent. Uh, uh, number nine, I think we already took care of that. The architectural plans we have, we're showing the door, we're showing all the doors the way they're going to look. Um, building footprint, we're going to add that to the plan. I guess it's on the existing conditions, but not it's on this, but not this. We can uh, uh, add that gladly. Um, and then uh, sewer service, unknown, so we're going to, uh, we can't really uh, get a detailed rendering of that yet. So uh, Tobin's going to deal with all the details which uh, Jay brought up which is his drainage related and then the lighting plan um, it, it doesn't uh, include heights so we've got four right now I think we've got four one two three four five twenties and one ten uh, you can put that on the plan if you want you know the heights of the poles um, one thing I did notice in John's letter was on the lighting plan you mentioned, are you talking about you want this illuminated? No, I'm ta what I'm talking about is if you look at the, the, the foot panels and the property lines, you know, yeah, yeah. Foot panels, you, know you, you cut the, you cut the, uh, the, the, the uh, foot panels off at the property line. Okay. But I can't find the plan. Well, it's right here. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, I'm just that's up. Up. yeah. Um, and and I, it's not. I don't. It's not a huge deal. I just want to make sure people understand that on main uh, on main street, you got you have almost a foot candle at the driveway. So what I'd like to know, what I'd like to know is on the other side of main street. I mean, I don't have a problem with you putting some light under the driveway on main street, but our ordinance says you're not supposed to be lighting. You know, you should not supposed to be. Uh, Putting, sending light off the property. So over here on Railroad Avenue, I think you're good. So just reduce it. On the no, I'm not, I'm not even suggesting you reduce it. What, really, what I'd like you to know is, 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 is what's the light over here on this side? Oh, yes. Yeah, so so people that live over here, they, they don't want to have light going into the yard. But I don't think there's a problem having some light spilling out on the main street to show where your driveway is. That's I, I'm, that's right. cool. Right. And so actually it's, it's, it's over here. That, that needs to be zero from right. you. Right. Or maybe even zero over in here, but you know, if there's a little bit of light spill over here, I mean, you've got nothing here. You got, well, you got point one, but you know, that's almost zero. Right over here, you got a little, I think, right at the end, right on railroad avenue. Nah, I don't think. I don't think you do actually. I, I don't know. Yeah. You, you stop right at the lot line. You right. Got point two. We're just lighting up the road. Yeah, so, and, and again, yeah. I'm not. That's not really a problem. I mean, it would be nice to see if we went 20 feet over. Are we at zero? Right. Just because there are you know people living there, they don't want to see your what. Well, actually, that's a hedge. It's a full on. Um, yeah, but that's not going to be tomorrow. I mean, that may not be tomorrow. No, you're right. So I guess it would be just nice to see this area right here because we don't want to get complaints from someone saying, you know, they put up these lights now we can't sleep at night. So right. this is an area that I think has a, is a little bit of concern to me. Not, not I'm not saying the board does. Right. And then in this this area here, and I'm not really concerned about this. More more, I just want to see. Bring bring your bring the lumens out into this area so we can see where it drops okay. off. Yeah, because I, I think it's a good idea to put some light into the road though, so people can see. Where yeah, I mean, yeah, we're right. But I don't want to. I don't think it's fair to send it into the neighbors. You know. So because I had you superimpose that tobin onto those. Plants. That's the lighting. Yeah. 
So how how do we extend? I mean, you talk to the lighting guy, and he'll provide you additional yeah. numbers. And he'll it, it, oh, so you didn't get it? Uh, he didn't. Probably, this is probably no. he, this okay. is probably what they cut off. They yeah, cut, uh, they, 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 cut they probably off. cut them off here. Okay. So all uh, this is what I think Tobin understands. This area here, yeah, yeah. and right, 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 right over here. Just so right. okay. we all understand. I yep. mean, if there's a little light trespass on the rear track, I don't think anybody. Right. You know. Okay. All right, that's totally doable. I don't, you know, see if there's any issue, and then we can also add the one. We can add the, the uh, pole heights. Pole heights. Yeah. But we're not talking about having to light this because it, this is more like no, not no, really no. used. Okay. So we're good. We're just lighting the parking area. Yeah, just, and just, have the, just add the pole heights and maybe, okay. you know. Yeah. All right, so we're good on that. So basically, <coughs> um, I think everything else, uh, we, we don't have any disagreements on any of these points, really. It's just kind of technical stuff we can add. The, um, I think everything else is, was uh, told when the, these points here, I think you were going to address. Yeah. Was it one through six? Uh, what are we talking about? Oh, I'm gonna, I just want to talk about the storm war. I mean, okay. that's the biggest issue. So I think that's it. So the, the only other things that I wanted to talk about were, um, uh, yeah, architectural stuff is stuff that I would deal with a building inspector, like the ADA ramp. Obviously, that's going to be a building inspection issue. That'll be done to code. Um, we've just done a rendering here, but obviously, you know, it, it's going to get inspected, so it's going to be built to code. Based on the architectural um, scale, that's where it's going to basically end up, but there's no detail provided, which that would be a building inspection thing. Um, and then, uh, I guess the only other thing he mentioned, screen on the dumpster. I kind of thought with the railroad track here, which is a raised bed, and these two solar panels, I'm kind of not as much screen. There's no neighbors that can see this, because um, you really can't see over the railroad bed, and then you've got the, the panels. So I was going to call, call that the screening. And then um, Tobin was going to address the, uh, some of those uh, drainage issues that Tobin brought up. Uh, one thing real quick, maybe I'll go over real quick, Tobin, for you jump in is the um, waiver. Um, I don't think the waiver really changed. The only thing that changed is we, from the last meeting, I think the only thing that we changed is we dropped it to 62 spaces from 64 because Tolvin um, made this comply. This was the entrance in the parking lot that was previously like 21 feet. So now that's in compliance. The only um, uh, part of the parking lot that's not in compliance is this one small area here, which is uh, 21 feet, um, and that serves uh, you know a smaller percentage, like maybe a third of the parking lot in the back. Yep. So it's kind of um, not the main lot. Like most of the tenants, honestly, are going to park here because this is the entrance. This will be more like commercial and overflow parking, maybe guest parking. You're going to probably find most of the tenants are going to park here and here, walk right into the building. So um, so we just kind of limited it to there. It, it, you know, Obviously, we could comply if we took away this space, and we could probably comply. Um, but I didn't see that. You know, And obviously, we could make that as big as possible. It might end up being 21 and a half if, if we cheat this down. But um, So that would be the only part of the waiver. We're still asking for that one aisle to be not in compliance. And then the parking table, Tolvin's put the parking table on, um, but we actually use, if you look at the parking table, we use the two and a half space per residential unit, but we're actually asking to reduce that to two. Um, based on the way he's got it calculated, um, you don't really even need to reduce it to two, <coughs> but um, it's kind of pick your poison, like you either do it this way or come up with more commercial space spaces as opposed to residential spaces. I thought the two and a half was extreme, and that's why I think I went with the two. Um, but if you read the waiver letter, it kind of explains. It, it doesn't explain the parking waiver base exactly on these numbers, but it does use a shared calculation. So I think that's subjective. However, you want to look at the shared um, you know, uh, the shared calculation. I think the way I did it, I figured even if half of the residential people stay home 
on a work day, we still comply with our 62 spaces and they come out. That's the way I looked at it intuitively. Is okay, so let's take worst case scenario. Half the people don't go to work that day that live in the residential portion. We still comply if you use that shared calculation, uh, you know, with a half. So I think that's kind of how we came up with that. Um, and that, I think that covers the waiver issues um, pretty much. I don't think a lot's changed between the last meeting and this meeting. It, we did, you know, we did comply with this because this was kind of a sketchy area where cars are turning, they're coming off yeah. railroad out. So we wanted that to comply, and I actually added the pavement on railroad out just to make it nicer. So as long as the town allows me, I would pave, pave that portion of the road for the town. It'd just make it easier for the maintenance and, um, you know, cleaner. Okay. Uh, and so that's it. So I think Tobin was going to address the rest. The, the, uh, this granite curve that we have in the, um, uh, on the plan, this is actually existing and it's on the railroad bed property. So what we've done, and Tobin will explain it, is we've, increase the drainage calculation to include everything from the granite curve down. Uh, and that was actually one of Jay's requests. Uh, the, the railroad tracks are on the other side of this granite curve and all that water doesn't make it beyond the granite curve. That all runs down and runs back this way. So we've actually, to, to be more in compliance, we've increased the runoff calculation to include all the water from here down. And that's what this pond and that's what, what told me a little bit more into the really interesting questions. Uh, but, yeah, so regarding the drainage, um, you know, Jay had some comments regarding the rear of it, but the bottom line is we are proposing a reduction in off-site flow in the site. Um, uh, you know, he's asked why we are not tying in the roof drain into our detention pond, because it's clean water, and uh, why, why do more digging up just to put it into a detention pond. It's clean water, it's part of our calculations, uh, and it's, it's going off-site as it does today, and we're, we're treating the, the polluted, or the, the runoff from the, from the parking lot, which is what you want to do, and we're detaining and treating that. So that's, that's the intent there. What's really the issue is, is out front is we are not proposing any, any stormwater detention. Right now, this is the edge of pavement right here, so we are proposing a little bit uh, of increase in impervious surface. Uh, and also, as you can see by the contours, right? So these contours, so this is the watershed divide of what flows onto the abutting property uh, for a lot, is that 51, right? Yeah, so he, he's concerned also that if we're increasing the flow and what's, what's impervious is, is heading there now, and there is a slight berm along the property line which pushes it out to Main Street. So there will be no increase in runoff to the abutting property. There will be an increase in runoff to Main Street. And, and based on the calculations, it's about 0.25 CFS for pretty much every storm. I think it varies from 0.22 to 0.27 uh, uh, cubic feet per second is what's the increase in runoff to, to Main Street. We have tried to talk to the DPW, but I, I guess they, are, they have not uh, gotten back to Jeff. Um, and so and I think that's a valid point that uh, civil consultants makes is, is getting input uh, from the DPW regarding that. Uh, and I guess we're looking to you for a little assistance into how we'll we can get one. Get one what? We don't, we don't have, have a park 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 park. Oh. It's a road agent. We have a road agent. All right. All right. All right. One person. Agent, so it, yeah, I'll reach out to him about that. We don't, we don't have a full department that, that deals with this. Okay, okay. So, uh, so the, I, I guess told that's... To, told me to back up. The, the amount of impervious surface today versus what's going right. to be there tomorrow, I mean, I, overall, is right. increasing by how much? Uh, I, I guess I haven't got... That's well, where the edge of pavement is now. Yeah, right. Right, so this, these are so about half of that, so nine by... Uh, and that's the only... In, in the back, you're fine. In the back, we are increasing, but we're we're handling it. Yeah. Right. This is the only area that you need. So to up work front, right. up front, yeah. we are we are, you know, providing a nine by. Uh, these are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that aisle width is twenty-eight feet. To reduce that to twenty-four feet, you can, that doesn't accomplish anything. Well, we we didn't want to start to pinch in. This was our. We wanted to have a few feet beyond this large sixteen-foot garage door. 
So we didn't want to pinch in. So that way we still kept it 28. We did shrink it down. Originally we had it at 34, and we shrunk it down six feet uh, closer to here. But we wanted, to, we didn't want to shrink it down any more than that. Uh, so that th this is the finger of new impervious surface. I mean, and currently there's no, there's no detention. It flows right to the, and you can see Main Street has uh, catch basins and it's handling it now, and we're not aware of any issue. Um, but the road agent, you know, we've been unable to talk with him, but it's our feeling it's such a small increase in runoff uh, uh, that we were fine. But if the board needs us to, to at least talk to the road agent, we get that, but we also need, I guess, somebody to help us communicate with him. I think we moved that over for two reasons, right? We moved this over so we'd have less increase in impervious? Well, what I was asking, Jeff, is if you look at, move your finger over, go back up. You got 28 feet in that aisle width, you only need 24. Right. So I was asking, if you oh, shrunk yeah. that down to four more feet, you'd be right, you know, you'd oh, yeah. be and I, down that gain. I think we kept that that way because <clears throat> I actually, um, so Jay did mention that that doesn't comply with the tractor trailer, so we wanted to kind of give a little more room if, if there was a delivery. The other issue was... Well, this doesn't comply with anything, though. <laughs> You know, no, I know. You know, you know, well, you we, don't want, we don't want traffic to go back to no. the main street, but right. what are you going to do? It's there. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, That's so, totally something we could do. We don't need the 28 feet. Well, I, you but know. you know, you also don't, I mean, I, I don't know if you want to start cutting it down too much. It's, yeah. You know, I, I right. That's, that was our happy medium, we thought. Yeah. Yeah. But. Okay, so well, that's, what the, that's what the drain is for. Would previous pavement work here or not? It would not because it's all. Junk. It's all junk. We don't know what the soils are underneath, number one. Yeah. Um, you know, I guess if push came to shove, we could do some sort of underground. It, it, if push came to shove, frankly, I think we'd eliminate it. Um, if we could try and look at something underneath the parking lot. It's, so, it's fairly steep is the problem, right? You can't do these things on an angle. You have to go to the lowest point and make that level. So now you are down to 91. You know, how, that's uh, quite a few feet <clears throat> below. You know, if you run into ledge, you're not going to, you can't put it in. Um, so that, that's what we're running up against. But I'll uh, back, you know, we have lowered it. We have a considerable, if you, if you do, the, I think the net flow offsite is still uh, a negative amount. We're really cutting it back here, uh, you know, trying to do more than we can here, realizing that we're not meeting the letter of intent out front. But again, so this is not running to public, uh, pr uh, private property. This is running to Main Street, which does have stormwater drainage capabilities existing. So that's where we're at. Uh, the, the rest of you had some minor comments regarding no, uh, this is our dumpster location that we're proposing. Uh, since it's out back, the solar panels are next to it. We are not showing any screening. Um, I certainly can put my engineer stamp on all the plants. ADA ramp is the, here's the ADA ramp here. It certainly can be flexible. It doesn't. It's not a large impervious surface. However, that they can do it. This is this is to scale, obviously, and that's a what can be done. Is it exactly how it will be done? <laughs> you know, it's not going to be that way. Something will get changed, but we don't see it as a as a big deal. It can be certainly a field change to something so small. Well, can you add more spaces over by the detention pond? Or why didn't you add those there? To here? Yeah. Can you can you, can you squeeze one more in there? Is that uh, I didn't want to choke down the access to the dump. And originally, we had this as a turnaround for sort of delivery vehicles. Yeah, uh, so you want to be able to pull into that gravel. Yeah. Right. I think it was plowing too. The plowing. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, we want to. I don't think Jay mentioned it, but I think one of the things the board would probably want is where you have the grass line swale note on there. It's one percent. Yeah. That probably should all be noted as no parking with pavement markings or something there. No signs or pavement markings because. You know, if people start parking down that along the swale, that's going to really choke that down. And, uh, sure, you know, we hope with the grass. I mean, it's going to be grass. I don't know. 
certainly want, don't want anything that in, in, intrudes into the uh, no, I mean, travel it, way. But, no, I mean, I, I, I mean, just just paint, you know, little, literally markings on the pavement would be fine. But oh, do you, pay, you know, yeah, just so people don't right. parallel park down there. Sure. You know, see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm assuming you're going to monitor it, but you know, I I don't think we want to have we we don't want to create a you know problem with emergency <clears throat> services people. And told me my last comment question is this you have an area striped out by the railroad avenue that's paved. Is there yes. is, is there any reason that can't be landscaped, uh, green space? Oh well, where it's next yeah, to the yeah. parking? Yeah. Um it, we didn't want to make a green space because to facilitate plowing. If we make that, you know, then you gotta go up and around the parking spaces. Yeah, I know, I'm just trying to I got no I'm trying to get that. that. I'm trying yeah. to find some you know. I got no problem with that. I mean, that's that actually is not bad because you're, you're gonna make that turn anyways. So maybe sure. you're okay with making a green? Totally. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. I mean, it, it would help. I think it might look nicer actually. Well, striping's gonna look pretty, you know. Yeah, I think it would be a nice, softer look actually. So that's a good recommendation. Uh, <clears throat> any questions from the? No, to to get back to the. Main Street drainage issue. So to, to speak with the road agent, one, give the select board office a call and ask for, uh, we can make an appointment with him. Ask for Caroline, she's our secretary. We can certainly make sure that uh, the road agent calls you back. Yeah, uh, Caroline at the. Right here, right here. Yeah, I've already Hello. talked to her and, and mentioned, I said I have plans for him, I'd like to meet with him, and yeah. there was no response. She oh, said he's how been. How long ago was that? Uh, as soon as I got the updated plans from Tobin, okay. I, uh, yeah, was it was it? early December. I, when I got your revision, I went to Carolyn and I said, uh, I'd love to speak to the road agent because you know, I need to present him with the plans and tell him what's going on. And then she said he's been notified and that was it, where she left. I followed up and she said, well, he's been notified. Is the new road agent going to be helpful or would it be more, would civil consultants be... So we'll consult we probably would be better, but we should at least consult with the word. Okay. Right. Right. I just don't know how familiar he is with I mean, he's still, he's, he hasn't been on, on board all that long. I mean, he's still relatively very new, so. Right. And he's been a little busy in the last couple of weeks with some weather, as you all know, so. Um, yeah, maybe consult, civil consultants might be actually better. Oh. Discuss with them first. You so know what, they're, they're going to want to do an analysis and... I, I, if that's the way you want to go, that's the way you want to go, but I have concerns about that. Well, then maybe be more, you know, call Caroline then. <laughs> See if you can get, you know. Yeah. I mean, they, he may they may he may have a record of issues on Main Street. I, I don't know. I just don't know. Yeah, you know, the way the, the Jay. The former road agent would have known. Yeah, the way Jay left it, or he implied is basically if you can get the road agent to sign off. It's, it's really that, that's the issue. Is. Yeah, but if we can't get the road agent to make a comment, then what do we do? Well, I don't think that was a requirement, but, you know, it's up to the board, I guess. You know, it doesn't comply as it is, right? The way it's already producing uh, runoff as it is, it's just because we're increasing it. That's, that's right. They, I mean, they have it. They were out for the interest of the best town and uh, year yeah. before then. Jeff, what's your uh, what's the best phone number for the road agent to call you at to get an appointment with you? Uh, me, mm -hmm. uh, 603 970 3544. Okay. Any other comments from the board? Yes, sir. Um, on the uh, your light, you have a couple of lights attached here, some that are. 125 watts and one that is 78 watts. Is there a key on here as to where you want to install which of these various lights? Yes, there was the original. There was a PDF that was originally submitted by the uh, uh, lighting company, and they specially demarcated which one's which. Uh, was that? Yeah, that, that was never printed and submitted. It's. Um, it's pretty detailed, but we could put it on the plan if you want to know the wattage. 
I, well, I don't know off the top of my head. It's only important, you know, when you're building this thing, someone's going to have to inspect and say, okay, this is the, you know, this is the 75, this is the 100. Right. We so, have all those plans. But uh, I guess the town needs them, though. So, just, you know, maybe just add, you know, on the lighting plan, just, or the, the site plan, if you can do it. You know, 75 watt. How That's what I'm thinking, yeah, put it on the site plan. It's easy. Yeah. You know, and, and, and what you're doing is they have the full height. Right. It's pretty easy. I think that makes sense. And when you calculated, uh, Tobin, when you calculated the, the pole height, was it on a bot? Was it on a uh, sauna tube? I did not calculate the pole. I, I assume they did have pictures of sauna tubes on it. I'm not sure what the height of those. Uh, you know, I mean, if they're two meters, I mean, if they're another foot high, it's not going to change the photometrics that much. No. It? Okay. All right. All right. Well, then, if you're <clears throat> higher than your car bumper or whatever. I, yeah, I'm, like I'm assuming they're going to be three feet high or yeah, whatever it is. Feet. Feet. Just go back to the lights again. So, in terms of, of uh, you know, not intruding unnecessarily, was it the prior person or the you that came up with the Mr. Engineer that came up with the the particular light voltage per? No, I, the lighting guys come up with that in the photometrics. So the lighting guys create their their points of this is how much lumens is on the in the area, and this is you know they tell us they have their supply, what pole height, what wattage. And they create the lumens plan. They give that information, and I just plop it on the site plan. Okay. I'm not a lighting guy. I, sure. I, I don't know. In terms of the, um, you proposed some pear trees, uh, landscaping in front. You know, pear trees lose uh, leaves during the winter. Any thought? And I, yeah, I am concerned about light bleeding in terms of the, you know, this residential units right across the street from there. Any thought to giving you know evergreen type shrubs instead that would stay full year round as opposed to pear trees and maybe it's not a significant issue, but if I lived around there, I'd be concerned about the light among other issues. Yeah, uh, you know, I generally try to recommend street trees. I don't know how they look upon evergreens. You got to find something that's salt tolerant, and I'm not sure that you know. Um, and I'm not sure pear trees are like lindens are. Um, they're pretty good for street trees. Little yeah. lindens. I, I don't know about pears, but you know you got to be. You also got. to, I don't know where the. You, you, you don't have any power overhead, do you? There. No, it's gonna be underground. I but mean, on the street. On the street, there is. Yeah, that's where the lines go. So I got to be concerned. You know, that's the other requirement. That's why the pears are not abroad. Uh, uh, Arborvitae is the classic go-to. Yeah. You don't mind the look of those, I guess I'm. Yeah, I don't this know. isn't a thorn, man. I mean, no, I know, I know. I hear. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I like people to see mention. the building. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like the, the problem with evergreens <laughs> is if it's going to be retail or you want to invite people in, and an evergreen blocks it. So I, I think I like um, a tree that was salt tolerant, but a deciduous tree I think is a better look for the street, and I think it's going to. Um, you know, give it the color in the fall, and then the the, full, the shade in the, in the summer. In the winter. Sure. I don't think I don't I don't think that landscape area will affect the lighting plan anyway. Uh, what there's, there's nothing there now, right? Yeah, it's just, just a dirt. dirt. Shrubs been pulled out. It's a pile so. of dirt. Yeah. What's what's the lighting plan? What's how's the lot lit now? Is it lit at all? I don't think it is at all. No. Okay. no. There's no Your lot's not lit now with it. It's overhead lights from the street lights. Yeah, right, yeah. The street gives you actually quite a bit of light. You'd be surprised. So, no, that's what I'm saying. There's a lot of light there now, so I don't think that... Yeah. Uh, I don't think you're adding... To the neighbors, anyway, I don't think you're adding anything right. more. But, but, I certainly that. change those trees, no problem, whatever. Uh, I would just make sure they're salt tolerant, whatever they are. I know. usually go through Charlie from Site Structures. He yeah. knows all that stuff, so... Definitely consult with him on that. Uh, anything else from the board before we open up for public comment? All right. Um, so why don't we open the floor up for questions? <coughs> so Leopold, 426 Washington Street. Um, you said that you're not screening in the back? Is it just the dumpster you're not screening? Or is it you're not screening anything? Just the dumpster I was referring to. Okay, and so then my question goes to the board. Is there a um, ordinance 
that says dumpsters have to be screened because there's a dumpster on the opposite side of the tracks that's not screened? There's a, there's a, there's a site plan regulation that says that they should be screened, yes. Okay. It's not an ordinance, so if something's waiverable or, in this case, the board might say, it, this, the, the, the dumpster's up against the tracks, it's sandwiched by two solar panels, we don't think it's, you know, a screening is necessary. So it's, it's not an ordinance, it's a regulation. Um, so I heard a little bit about plowing. So is the plane to plow it up next to the dumpster into the retention plane, all the snow banks? Or the snow. There's going to be many areas of uh, of plowing, right? So we will, we certainly will store snow here. Uh, some will be in the uh, in the swale as little as we can, but some will end up in that area. Some along towards the, the railroad tracks, and some also along here for out back. Uh, here for what's now. This is going to be a retaining wall, so we can't plow it into here. So this will have to all work this way. Uh, we'll have a little bit of storage in between the trees, but probably not much. Um, so it's fair to say you're going to need a load around. So. You're going to have you're going to have removal. Anything that's in excess, they'll have, they'll have to deal with move take off site. Yeah. I know that the board said they're not concerned about the lighting going off the back of the tracks. I was just wondering if they could enlighten me about how much light is going off the back of the tracks because my living room window literally looks out on the tracks. <laughs> I, I, I said that and I'm, not, and I'm not speaking for the board. Okay, so sorry. So let me just to clarify. Um, and that is a, that, so that, it is a good question. If you, if you look at the lighting plan, there's about uh, two, uh, two foot candles over, uh, told the shore of the high point. So the last page. There is a little bit of light over behind the parking lot there. That's where that's where it's really hot. <laughs> yeah. Here, I got it. Uh, right here. Right here's a little, little bit of light. Oh uh, yeah, point one, two, little point two. Point one, point two. But well, that's not even to the curb. Over here, Tolan, is where it's a little bit hotter. On um, the upper parking Oh yeah, point two, point two. No, 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 on the tracks. Right, like right here. <laughs> Sorry. Yes. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So you, get, you actually got a, four, a five, five, and a three, four, nine. Oh, that's and right. And I don't know where they die off. That's the. It's right and on the that's picture. the back side of it, so it should die off pretty quickly, just as these do, as these do. But, uh, I mean, that's a good question. We can have that clarified. I'm not sure. Yeah, so just add, I would say add that well, area. You know, go across the tracks and add, and, and then add, add the lumens so we know. Just because I know there's two houses right there, and then it goes up a hill, and my house is at the top of the hill. So, like, um, they're just wondering if it's going to cross, like, the road and stuff. Yeah, yeah, right there, yeah. Church Street's already lit up anyways, isn't it? Yes, <laughs> there is a... By traffic light by... In, there is a traffic light. light there, I just didn't know if it was going to... Yeah, not to give you a number, but you might more. also want to... If there's a street light there on Main Street, you might want to find out where that is, because... And here's the pole. I know, I see the pole. Well, yeah, it's probably right there. Yeah, it's off the pole, right? Well, I mean, yeah, I, I just out. don't want to spend so much time being concerned about your light when there's two Honestly, streets. Honestly, that's why I'm not even raising it. Well, that, I, 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 don't, I don't know, Mike. I don't, yeah. Two streets over from there, and, and <clears> it's <throat> lit up like a Christmas tree. I mean, right in front by your entrance there. Yeah, so yeah, so this must be, they must have them on these utilities. Yeah, and I can't remember, well, when we leave, we can look, but it's on one, I don't remember what side of the, your driveway it is, but it's really, light know. pollution there is not really... Yeah, yeah, but this is a good much we'll, we'll, we'll so back into the middle of River yeah. Street, perhaps, because it's not lit there. Okay. Yeah. Um, anything else? I think that is it. Um, so let's suspend the, the public comment at this point. Um, so, John, you have done a for us. Yeah, I mean, I think it's premature well, to, you. you know, to talk about improving this thing. What I really, what I think really we should do is get, uh, I will tell you the one place that, that Jay Stephen and I disagree is on parking. I, 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 I think it's, 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 it's not reasonable to suggest that these people are going to strictly comply with our parking requirements. It, it's built, you know, and I'm not trying to, uh, <laughs> 
if this was a, a brand new site, we wouldn't I, I would not no say this, and I would never say this. But in, in this case, what are you going to do? I think they've made every effort. If, if, there's, if, if there's not adequate parking, I, yeah, I think that the, the, the owner is going to be hurting himself. He's not hurting yeah. anybody else. But this has been a busy mill for many, many years. It was one of the town's bigger employers. Uh, what are you going to do? Right. Um, the envelope is what it is. It, right. And I, you know, and we're not going to create more parking here. We already have a little bit of a drainage issue, which I'm not terribly concerned about. So I, I know Jay, Jay keeps raising that. I, I, again, I disagree with him that I, I, it is what it is. Um, but I do think to get to an end point, what we really want to do is instead of having, you know, seven, you know I don't know how many uh, comments there were from Jay, 35, I'd like to get down to two or three where we can just say, okay, we're good. You go work those out. I think it's too. There's too many right now, I, and I don't want Jay to feel the pressure of not knowing what the board's feeling is. So I'd really would like them to come back next month, and say, okay, these are the three issues we have outstanding, and we'll say, okay, get those resolved. Um, and then the only other, other comment that I made was, and we talked about this, it, we, we went through this with the Peller and with the other mills. Um, what's Jeff doesn't know what he's going to do on the first and second floors here. Um, and I don't know if we want Jeff coming back every seven months when he says, "Hey, I got a tenant for this." Or, you know, I, I think, and I don't know how to, I don't know how to deal with this other than to say it's commercial space. The parking calculations are going to control what he, uh, what he can and can't do with the building. But, um, and I'm assuming that whatever, when you get a tenant, you, you know, you're going to have to deal with building code issues. Um, so, so my, you know, I just. If you understand my concern, I don't want I don't want them to have to come back every time there's a change of a, a change of a tenant. Mm -hmm. So um, there's a list of approved um, uses, uses on, for the, on the parking that, so, so, which is what I think we should sort of govern, which is what's going to govern this thing. Um, now I, I suppose if they abandon the commercial and bring more residential, then I guess we would want to see it again. Um, but I think if the mix is what it is, I, I you know I don't I, I, I I'm I'm assuming the board will be good with that. Well, plus, if he's going from, um, if you're keeping some manufacturing in there, Jeff, and all of a sudden you decide you're going to have a restaurant or right. a brew pub or whatever, um, which I would encourage you to try, try to do, but <laughs> yeah, right. um, I'm sure you prefer that too. Start having a you're gonna experience. you're gonna have to do major renovations, and you're gonna have to come to the select board for a building permit, and yeah. you're gonna have to have that conversation with us anyway. So. Right. If there's major concerns, we would be major change in the use. We'd be coming back to the planning board anyways. I think retail was middle of the road, which is where I left it. Right. So I think I called most of it retail. So that, I'm not as concerned. I I I I, I think that John got the right. I, I, yeah. Um, so so those are. The, I mean, I, I my my biggest concerns are uh, not my biggest concerns, but my my biggest objections with. Or, or disagreement with with civil consultants is over the park because I don't think there's anything we can do about it. We, we're trying to encourage a vibrant downtown. It, it, it's you know he's just going to impact himself if he, if he over leases the place or if he leases to someone that's using it too intensively. So I guess that's his problem, not ours. And, and the site's built, um, but there are some minor issues: the lighting, the drainage. I'm not I'm not particularly concerned about this, but I th it'd be nice to have the town at least whoever can. can <coughs> Know, uh, look at that issue, uh, make sure it's not a big concern. Um, and then I think what we ought to do is just have Jay, Jay's list whittled down to a small, a hand, you know, a small uh, number of, of issues that we can handle. Because right now there's just too much stuff, I think, to try to uh, put on him and say, just we'll make it a condition of the approval. That, and, and that's my opinion. So, and I don't want to see you again, but I, I you know, I. I think that's the fair, the most fair. Do you want it all the notes on the site plan? Is that how you like it? Like without the existing conditions plan? So, the problem is the site plan gets busy. We don't record them anyway. But the, the 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 good thing for us is that we don't have the greatest record keeping here. So if we have a site plan with as much information on it as possible, like light height, like light pole heights, the the waters of the lights. So we can always find that plan, and yeah. the building inspector goes out there to yeah. to, to issue you a certificate of occupancy for the, the, the parts of the building that can say, "Oh yeah, that was done." So as much information as you can put on the site plan it, it, is is I think is the most helpful for the for the town. You know, this isn't Dover or Portsmouth where we're going to save all these. It's probably gonna, the site plan is probably going to govern. Yeah. So. 
So in order to give uh, civil consultants direction, I, is the board feel that they're ready to vote on or act on some of the waivers as John has been, been talking about? I'm, I'm ready to act on the parking one. The, the, the drainage waiver, I, I, I think. You know, oh, I guess that's right. If you want to, if you want to, a pull, you know, a pull, a, a hand, you know, just a, a, a pull straw, we could throw our hands up and say whether we think, but what we think. But I think, the, the, in fairness to the road agent, we ought to ask them. What do you think? Yeah, yeah. No, I'm sorry. I guess I was, and, and I guess Jay has other comments that are sort of sprinkled. Uh, what was it? Uh, the standard, uh, the standard. Uh, no, the planning board needs to determine if the grass buffer areas adjacent to the exterior property line around the upper parking area are adequate and can be fully used for snow storage. I, I mean, I don't. We, you know, I don't, comments I, I, like we, that. I, I think we can deal with those issues. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know what. To, I mean, it, it, it is what it is. I can't. I don't it's know. An existing property. Right. right. It's not like it's new construction. Yeah, yeah. I know. It's right. 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 It, it, I guess I feel like civil consultants' comments are more like that. It boils down to the drainage for me, the drainage and the parking. Yeah. Uh, you know, all the other ones, are fine. We can, we can work with them. I can, you know. I guess if we can get this is the, the, the most helpful thing to me, Tobin, would be get to be would be to get civil consultants plan uh, uh, comments whittled down. And I'd even be happy to go over there and, and meet with all of you to sort of say, this is where our concerns, our concerns lie. Let's focus on those issues, and then revise the plans once and for all, so we have okay. a, a complete I'm all set for that. of revised right. plans. And then, and then, hopefully next month we're going to be we'll be in a position to, you know, take a vote. Is that fair? I think that sounds. I, again, I just think there's so much up in the air yep. still that it's. Well, the timing of getting this letter back is. Less right, than right, and Jay was apologetic. I mean, yes. we worked yeah, all weekend. Yeah, no. He yeah. worked all weekend to get that to you over the holiday. Right, and then, well, then for him not to have the existing conditions plan. I mean, that's a third of this letter is certainly the existing conditions plan, right. which right. he didn't see. Yep. Uh, um, yeah. Okay. So we'll hold off on. Motion. Okay. So we would need a motion to continue till. So you don't want to go on any of the waivers before the Well, I think the parking waiver is, is I think I, you should, wait. I mean, I, would, I think that's a good thing to vote on. And I, do you have it written up with you? I don't have it. Yeah, yeah, I've got it. I'm right here. Um, yeah, it's in your packet, actually. Uh, oh, you've already read this once. Yeah. So it would be waiver request one and... And certainly the size of the parking. One, two. Can you have a bulleted list? No. Oh, no, it's 11. It's 11. Okay. Hey, you know what? Why don't we. I think it would be cleaner if you do it as a bulleted yeah. list. Yeah. If we can set up this as a narrative. Yeah. Can I ask a question? Yes, please. If the drainage on the front doesn't collide, which we know it does, it doesn't. Do I need a waiver for that? If, if it does if, comply? If, well, it, doesn't. it doesn't comply technically, right? It didn't before. And so it doesn't but you're now. making it worse. Yeah, that's right. Right. That's right. right. So do I need a waiver? Well, sure. Okay, so when we come back to the next meeting, if we if we get the road agent to sign off on it, then we would present the waiver for that and additionally. Does yes. that make sense to me? Yeah, I think so, sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, so if, if if you can prepare your your request for waivers and a some sort of bulleted list, right. sure, make it easier for us. To and, and Jeff, you you started when you were talking today. You said you were count, you were counting two spaces per unit. Right. The table on the site plan still says two and a half. So I guess what would be most helpful for us is to say because this is you could change that. It, well, it's pretty verbose, and, and it's giving me a headache. <laughs> All I think you need to say is. This is what's required, this is what we're proposing, yeah. or this is what standard right. we're using, and right. this is the waiver we want. Right. So, I mean, it should be fairly cons fairly easy, and but this yeah. is pretty hard to understand. And, <laughs> and but the one thing I think that there's no wiggle room, at least for me, I mean, if, if I'm going to recommend anything to the board, is there's no wiggle room on ADA spaces. You, I mean, if there's a yeah. requirement, you got to have, and I think you, and you do. Yeah, we're so, not looking for yeah. a waiver. No, I know, I know. I, I, I know, I'm just saying that that's yeah. one thing that's, you know, but... The, the other, the, the regular spaces, well, what are we going to do? You know? Yeah, I mean, that's just, 
you know, we could all come up with a different shared use uh, property yeah, I think a simple waiver request saying this is what's required, like this is what we're proposing. Okay. That's all we need. Put it the way I phrased it on the yep. table. And then, well, then, and, and then make a table the way you're saying. Yeah. If you're, if you're using the table, two, should go with If you're using two per tenant, then don't put on the plan as two and a half per tenant, which is what you got. Yeah. Or two and a half per dwelling unit, you know? Yeah. Totally. I'm just going to, I just. I'll assume we're going to get that waiver and I'll put it on the table and we'll keep it all consistent. And, and I can certainly, if Jay has a question as to whether or not the board is favorable to that waiver, I can certainly tell him that, you know, the board seems to be favorable to it. I guess that's what, what's confusing is that we're doing the, the day, night, shared, right? Because I created that table. So, so for during the day, right, it's one for every 200 square feet, which is 15. And we are providing 15 parking spaces for the day, uh, uh, but only five at night. So, so it is a very. I guess I want to. Should we just we just want it simplified that? We don't have a day night standard, so it's one yeah. for two hundred. That's what you that's what you provide. We'll take okay, it we'll we, take it off. If, if, if it's two, two and a half for a dwelling unit, then that's what you yeah. have to provide. So I'm asking for and, two. And I don't think this board disagrees okay. that two might yeah. be a reasonable number, but just you know yeah. that's what you just. Oh, yeah. I get you. Okay. What, okay. What's proposed? Versus what you're what yeah, you're that's providing. What, that's what, what we want to know. Right. And that's what we'll grant the, well, That's what we'll act on. That's the waiver we'll act on. Right. So. Right. And as a justification, you can say they're shared. Okay. All right. Well, the can busy, we can we just say that the, the required parking is eighty nine and we're providing sixty two? Yeah. And, and and our justification is that we no, think that you know we're only going to allow two by lease per unit. Yeah. And, and, we, and we're hopeful, we're optimistic, we're, we believe that during the day, most of the tenants will be gone, the residential tenants will be gone, and those spaces can be used by re retail spaces, okay. retail users. That's what, I, I think that's, it's a simple waiver to write. So, you, so it's too verbose at this point, so you don't feel that you can act upon it. There's nothing in front of you in writing that you can easily vote upon. Is that yeah. what the problem is? It's kind of a letter more yeah. than it is a waiver. Yeah. So I get, cool. we, we can dial the table. In the well, I just, I'm just trying to get something accomplished tonight, and I was hoping to, to just quickly add a statement right now that we are requesting a waiver from the requirement of 89 parking spaces. We are to provide 62. And, and I and I hear you. You know, and uh, you know, we we, we, we don't want to. You know, this is our third meeting. I think. Yeah. You know, we'd like to move on too. But I, I think, that in fairness to everybody else, that we ask for, you know, written waivers. It's not. It, I think you understand that we're, you're going. The board, I think, is pretty. I get. You know, I, I pretty favorable about that, about granting the waiver. We just need to have a little bit. Yeah, just so. clean it up. Yep. And then that includes. And make it simple. simple. Yeah. I would think you would take from this the sense that the board is agreeable if it was written that we're not going to have you come back next week and have issues with your parking or next right. month with right. your parking right. plan and furthermore with the, the, the drainage you know things could be discussed with the road agent um, not here to stand in your way by any means so okay. and I know some, an accomplishment a check mark would be nice to leave with you here tonight um, but without us doing any show of hand I, I would think you've, you've sat and listened that the, the parking I do not believe you will have any issue with that next month. I and I do know that, like, again, this is a totally different project, but it was a project in, in downtown when Schimberg did the, their subdivision, Scout Landing, it was called, I think. There was an issue with, you may remember, with some municipal drainage, and I don't know if Schimberg was asked to fix it or, or not, but there was, so, I mean, the road agent could say, hey, we've got a catch basin here that's, that's you know, broken, it's not working, we want you to fix it. Right. We don't know that. So, right. you know, that, that may be something he goes out and says, you know, this, this you got where I'm okay with it, but you got to do that. Totally, yeah. That's so a valid point. that's what we don't. That's something I will done the board one. Okay, I, 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 will I, done, so I, I don't know. I don't think it. Uh, I, given the issues we've had there, I don't think it was. Nothing ever had. Well, there was discussion. But I don't know if it there was, was a condition. There was a discussion. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. We have multiple drainage issues on uh, Church Street. All right. So given that, I. I would entertain a motion to continue this application to the February meeting. So I make that motion. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Aye
Thank you very much. Thank you for your time coming in. This was very excitable. This was all good. Yeah. Okay. This is very good news. Seven months ago. Yeah, yeah. Very good news. We're going forward. Yeah. I'm going to call um, Caroline in the morning to make a road agent call with you back. So. That would be awesome. Whether or not, I, I'm not going to say, what, 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 he's going to say, I don't know, but yeah, I want to talk to him. Right. Oh, oh, so we got them like a long time ago. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right, All right. we'll get a hold of you for a meeting with Jen. Sure. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Thank, thanks, guys, very much. This is evil. All right, thank you. Thank you. Um, next up on the agenda is approval of the minutes, which were sent in very timely fashion. Legally. Um, I don't remember reading them. I, I do actually remember reading them. I didn't have any comments. Um, I don't know. Do we have a, a motion to approve? Well, this was the last minute. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Uh, correspondence, there's kind of some junk now. Um, stuff from uh, just a newsletter. Address to Charlie Putnam. Um, and any other. Yeah, this thing, you know, I, don't, I don't know if, if, if John Krebs wants to have a look at that. Oh, I'm sorry, that wasn't it. Um, uh, this, doesn't, this doesn't say anything. It's like a Unitil website. Um, did it come ready for now? It did. Or certified. Certified? Just to, to the planning board chair? To Pat. Yeah. Well, at least there are only one behind. <laughs> I like the one that's sent to Charlie. Really? Really? Right. Uh, I saw one in there addressed to uh, Phipps. Yeah. Um, um, uh, no, it wasn't, wasn't Aaron. Ralph. Ralph. Father? Yeah. chair of the planning board? Oh, what is it? <coughs> oh, no. Oh, oh. It was nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, any other business that comes before the board? Anything on the agenda for next month besides? Uh, not that I have heard. I don't know if you've heard of anything. Um, Caroline hasn't mentioned anything to me. We have a conversation about having. Um, Riding and coming up and yeah. have a conversation with yeah, the members. Yeah, we we'll talk to them. But that's the only thing we have on the agenda. Yep. Just, yeah, I'll see if he's... Be Hopefully it will be a quick, quicker. quicker one with a little more streamlined next time. Yep. So he's, he's going to redo all these plants, so you can just, I can recycle all these. I plants. would hold on to one set, but you can recycle that. Yeah, we want... That's part of the problem that we've had, is that it's sort of coming to the grabs and, you know, rather than getting a complete plan set with you know, I, I keep getting sheets and sheets and sheets. And, so I would hang out of that, Sarah, and then maybe we can discard those. Okay. Any, any plans that anybody wants to, like, recycle? Thank you. <coughs> So our next meeting is scheduled for February 6th. Um, I have a conflict that um, evening. Um, I'll see if, yeah, I'll see if I can uh, get around it. It's because I, I wouldn't want to miss the training if we end up doing that that night. Um, how, how quickly can you find out? Uh, Pretty quickly, next day or two. I mean, uh, okay. I, I don't know, but we moved this meeting, didn't we? We moved we to this meeting. Yep. Um, I was just, I was going to say that you know we could, we could notify Jeff that we're going to do it a week later if it's, it has to happen, or a day later. I, you know, I don't know what works for everybody, but. Um. Why don't you find out what your availability is? Okay. Yeah. When we when we approach it that way. Um. Okay. Anything else? I just want to follow up one real quick on the Lavoie application. Um, there were, I think Miles was put under a lot of pressure to sign the plans, and he did. 
and they, I believe they were recorded. Well, the, you signed them. Yep. There's a lot of things that have not happened. So the the, appro the, the, the approved subdivision really is, in my opinion, I just want to make sure we're all on the same page, is meaningless because yes. it requires him, it requires Jason or the Lavoys to um, either get a variance or bring the road to or bring the road to San. It's really the and road. part of that is that we never reviewed a, a road design. It was never approved or reviewed and approved by the by the town engineer. So I, I don't. I never. I didn't understand why there was so much pressure to sign and record those. But I just. I want to make sure we're all. We all agree that without. Uh, a, a road, a without him meeting, without those, meeting conditions. those conditions strictly, it's it's not worth anything. Well, there will then be a building permit issue. Yes, yeah, the select board wouldn't be issuing a okay, building permit. Right. Right. Okay, I think I don't know what the. I don't you know would need to. The applicants would need to coordinate with the select board for improving the road and. Oh, right, but the, but you know that you know in, in general the, the, the way I mean the way this always works in the, uh, it's it, the last couple of roads we've done I, I guess are Greenview and, and Scout Landing but typically you know there would be you know uh, the planning board would be involved in terms of you know width and drainage and we we sort of oversee the design and you know and have the town engineer review it but we'd also weigh in on it so. Uh, you know, I don't know. This is a weird situation where I, I don't know if we come back to the planning board or we or the board of selectmen. We just say it's got to be designed by it's a review. Well, it's an existing road, design. right? I mean, yeah. you know, it's a class six road. Yeah. So uh, I'm not going to speak for the select board tonight, but as a single member, I would say I would require want um, the applicants required to meet with the town engineer and, and, and meet the standards that. Well, and, that and that's and that's part of the reason I didn't understand that what why why what, why he was pushing so hard to get it approved because now the waiver option is off the table because of the, our our approval I think said it had to meet town standards which means well, you yeah. know x number of feet of pavement yeah. right you know whereas we could have said okay well, you know we'll, right. we'll skinny it up for you but now I yeah. I think that's off the table yeah. so unless he came back but I just I you know it was. I think Miles was put under a lot of pressure to sign it, but I didn't agree with it, but he did. It, it, so, uh, the, the the research and reading that I did is those conditions get recorded. With, with the, I, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. Yeah, yeah. I know you. Were, I know you had to make a decision, and, uh, and I'm not <coughs> second guessing you. I'm just saying that I I don't think it does. Yeah, we're I no mean, further ahead. Uh, I I agree. Um, he did share with me that they're going to the the ZBA. Um, oh. Well, then that's great. Right? Yeah. Then that's great. Yeah. Yeah. It's still going to have to be established what is it going to be accepted for that road to support that lot. Well, I think it's the engineers going to become involved in, um, you know, bottom line, it, it's really an easy decision for the select board because it's going to be no on a building permit until that's been satisfied. So our approval, like you say, is, is of little value mm -hmm. because the big hurdle still stands. I just want to make that's sure, I I just want to make sure that everybody was in the loop. That's all. So. Yeah. I mean, I know, I know they wanted our approval, and they they had to understand oh, right. that the, the biggest hurdle is still not across. So. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to, uh, yeah. I wasn't sure. Everybody. We all understand. That. Okay. But okay. I, I'm not sure. I don't. I, well, they're going to the ZBA, so yeah. I don't want to speak for that. Sure, I don't know sure. if they understand. They don't understand. But. Okay. For the record, I'm participating in this discussion, being a ZBA member, mm -hmm. continuing to. Oh right. Yeah. So noted. Um, anything else? I'm afraid to ask this no, question. No, 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 no. I shouldn't have said anything. Uh, <laughs> entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. <laughs> and you'll ask for one of the next few days. Yeah, I'll, I'll let you guys know because it is. Aye. Thank you. Anyways.